Happy lunch, our gang. All right, beautiful Saturday afternoon, and we're all probably doing something, whether it's picking vegetables or weeding the gardens or working on some sort of project we have to get ready for the inevitable. It's funny how more and more people might be actually waking up that something's bad. You know, after the debacle that was the debate last week, uh, after the embarrassment that was the Stephanopoulos interview yesterday, I mean, come on, you know, Joe created NATO when he was six. There was a interesting, well, actually a few interesting pieces that have been put out. It seems that the mainstream is all of a sudden realizing what we've known or done for years, if not decades. You know, for the longest time, preppers were seen as conspiracy theorists, tinfoil hat wearing wackos. And then world the world just kept on moving forward and things got a little worse and a little worse and a little worse. And then we got Biden in and everything got more expensive and people can't afford houses and oh my god i either eat or put gas in the car or what do i do and people started waking up I mean, about a month ago the financial times put out an article saying that the you know preppers is now your time you know all of a sudden they were agreeing with what we were doing i mean even last year you had the Washington Post come out and say, hmm, you know what, maybe preppers are on to something. And as we're all stuck in this media bubble, if you will, you know, you've got far left CNN, far left MSNBC, you know, saying, oh, everything's perfect. Joe's the greatest president ever. And then, of course, you've got the opposing groups on the right hand side saying that you know, the world's about to blow up. The majority of the public is somewhere in the middle. Okay. You know, not far left communists and not far right neo-Nazis. You know, all of us are, okay, we want to protect ourselves. So you start looking for logic, reason, common sense, that sort of stuff. And you start, you're starting to see it. There was an interesting interview that was done just a couple of days ago. Uh, and I'll link it below so you guys can watch it. Okay, I'm not going to put it in this video because copyright issues and stuff like that. Uh, with Dr. Phil. Now, say what you will about Dr. Phil that, you know, Oh, he's not really a doctor, and oh, he's just a, a Jerry Springer with doctor in front of his name or whatever. Say whatever you want. But Phil McGraw is a in-the-middle, non-political person. Okay, I mean, he's interviewed Barry, or Bernie Sanders, Barry Sanders, he had Detroit Lions. Bernie Sanders, he's interviewed Donald Trump, he's interviewed Joe Biden, he's interviewed a lot of people. Okay, and really even though by what he says you could think he tips a little bit to the right he doesn't donate to political campaigns he doesn't make his politics known all right so you know you can kind of figure out maybe he's slightly to the right of center just by his commentary so he did a interview the other day and there's the long version and the short version of it. And I'm going to link below the short version because that was the important part. Unless you want to watch 20 minutes of a guy who's talking about this bunker that he built in Indiana. And, you know, it's got basically a condo underground. Uh, I didn't think that was important. But the important part of the video was a couple of the people he talked to. Now, one was Colonel Drew Miller, who y'all know we've talked to here on this channel. Uh, that was a few months back. Uh, I interviewed Colonel Miller for a little bit. Another one was Dr. Bradley Garrett, who's an author who spent three years talking to and living with preppers around the world. And both of them brought up really, really good points on 
why people prep, you know, not only the reasons, what they fear, you know, is it going to be the power outage for three days or is it going to be global thermonuclear war, okay, and everywhere in between. But it was kind of funny listening to Dr. Garrett, for example, uh, who had mentioned before he started doing this research, he lived in an apartment. After he finished doing the research, he now lives on a five-acre ranch. Okay. People are starting to realize that it's not crazy to be self-sufficient. But by no means am I saying all people are beginning to realize that. There's still a huge subset in this country, probably around the world, that believe, hey, no matter what, the government is going to take care of us. Yeah, the government's the one that caused the problems. Why do you think they're going to come help you? Okay, They want you to be subservient. They want you to be hungry or homeless or anything. They want to be the kings and queens while you are the peasants. That's the definition of feudalism, and that is the ultimate goal of the uniparty. Okay? You can say Democrats all you want, but there's plenty of rhinos in there. There are not a whole lot of true conservatives, hopefully that will change, in the United States political system that want everybody to better themselves there's still a ton of people in Washington that are only interested in bettering themselves at the expense of all of us. So in watching this interview, both Colonel Miller and uh, Dr. Garrett made some very good points, and that's why I wanted to link this, or link this for you, I guess, basically, so you can go watch it. Now, none of us, I don't think, maybe there's one or two on here, who have built big underground bunkers or something uh, are going that far. We're all trying to do what we can within the realm of what our resources are to stave off the inevitable, getting out of the cities, not having to rely on the grocery store, not having to rely on the power company, not having to rely on the water company. Because as you all know, most estimates say if we have any sort of world war, 90% of the population will die within the first one year. A lot, one of them, and I forget which one it was, whether it was Colonel Miller or Dr. Garrett, made a comment, and it's very true about preppers. We're very optimistic. People have a tendency to think we're pessimistic, thinking everything's going to hell and why are you doing this? No, we're all optimistic about coming out the other side. Pessimistic would be, we're going to die, there's nothing we can do about it. Optimistic is, okay, how are we going to rebuild after a catastrophe? We've got to survive it to get through it and then get back to normal life. We've got to get rid of the cancer on the earth and they will take care of it for themselves. So the optimism of what we all do is because we all want to make it through to the other side. And I thought that was very poignant. That was a very good comment. You know, it was interesting watching this Dr. Phil clip. And if you watch it till all the way to the end, and the, the full interview was well over an hour, okay? But like I said, 20 minutes of talking to a couple of preppers. The important part was Colonel Miller and Dr. Garrett. At the very end, they polled the audience and said, okay, after everything you've heard right here, what are your plans to do, you know, when you go home today? And some of it was good. I was glad to hear it. Nearly 50% of the people in the audience, when they did a survey right there, said that they were going to go home and stock and store more food. Now, a few of them, there were some that said go out and buy more weapons. One of the other choices was to go build a bunker. Okay, that was minimal. Okay, 
but nearly 50% said, hey, they're going to go put away more food. That's a good thing. The bad part was 35% of the audience said they're going to do nothing. I will pretty much guarantee every one of those 35% that said they're going to do nothing will vote for Joe Biden in November because, hey, the government will always take care of me. I believe in cradle-to-grave government. Okay. It gave me a little bit of hope knowing that at least half of this audience was willing to do something. You know, I mean, I say at least half because there's 1.3 percent that you know, build a bunker, or buy ammo, or whatever. That was it. So a little bit more than 50 percent. That was good. But if anything, it tells you that what you're doing, what you have been doing, is the right thing, because when the people that are now more to the center, and believe it or not, there are. Democrats that are preppers too, okay? Not a whole lot of liberals or progressives, I think, you know, unless putting your sex toys away is important. Uh, there's people that actually realize that something big is about to happen. And they want to be, as I said before, optimistic about coming out the other side. Prepping is not about pessimism at all, okay? Yeah. But like everything else, things have to get really bad before they can ever get better. Joe wants to build back better, right? He's doing a great job of destroying everything in the first place so somebody who's competent can come back and fix it all. Pinball out. <laughs>